variable rate fertilizer. This is something that's really starting to take off around the country, in part because farmers now have the technology to do it in their own operations. I'm excited just to be doing it on our farm in a strip-till situation, Darren. Well, okay, you talk about it and you say, well, I'm gonna variable rate my fertility. That's yep. a great thing, Bram, because there's certainly differences in the field in terms of productivity, so we may have to feed certain areas a little more or a little less than others. That's fine, but how do you set up a plant? Because a lot of farmers say, well, I don't even know where these different zones are at in my field. How do I know how I'm gonna vary okay, my rates? Okay, well, the, the number one thing that I will say is if you wanna vary rates, look at it by soil type. So my real quick example is we've got some really good land, but there are some sand belts that run right through it. So in a drought year like this, we literally had zero in the sand and we had 220 bushel corn in some areas of the rest of the field. So that's kind of a no-brainer because for years we've been putting the same rate of fertilizer all the way across. I'm pretty certain, and soil tests will prove that out, that we have more than enough P and K to raise about as much as that sand can possibly produce next year. So why dump a whole bunch more out there? So we're literally in some areas putting on 200 pounds of potash in the good areas and 25 pounds of potash in the bad areas. We're varying it that much, no kidding. And it makes economic sense, but it also makes sense environmentally that why would I throw a whole bunch of fertilizer out there that could could move off my field and end up in a river or a lake or something like that. We don't want to have that happen. Well, let's talk. We want to be smart. Yeah, but let's talk specifically then about nitrogen. Take 10 times your cation exchange capacity number, and that'll tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one point. So in these sandy areas I'm talking about, our cation exchange capacity is somewhere around 10. So we can put on 100 pounds of nitrogen safely. All right. Well, the rest of the field is going to need 200 pounds of nitrogen. Should I put 200 pounds in these bad areas? Absolutely no way. not. <laughs> right. So now with variable rate fertilizer, I can do that. And again, I can save money and be good for the environment. Well, the other thing to look at is just taking good soil samples. And you say, all right, I'm not exactly sure, you know, what soil types are where in the field, or maybe it's some new ground to me. Do some grid sampling in those fields and get to know what that field is all about. We've seen quite a variance again this fall, especially when we had this drought. And we had some areas that, as Brian mentioned, that completely burnt up and we had no crop. Well, there may be quite a bit of carryover fertilizer there, but you want to do some soil testing to see if it's going to be available. Yeah, because the whole thing is you want to figure out why am I having bad yield. If you just do variable rate fertilizer based on a yield map, I don't feel that's the right way to go. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because what I find in a lot of areas of the country, the yield is poor, not because the ground's poor. It's because we haven't properly fertilized there. So what we're telling you here for most of you is probably not rocket science. You're probably familiar with some of the variable rate work that's being done. The reason why we're talking about it is twofold. Number one, we just want to motivate you to do something on your farm and take a look at it. And number two, we're coming off one of the worst droughts in history. And this of all years is a good time to start variable rating fertilizer because there's a lot of untapped fertilizer still just sitting in your ground. Why double it up again? And then there are other areas in that same field, maybe just like on our own farm, where we used more than what we applied this year. So we got to make sure that we're properly fertilizing. Well, one other thing that may vary across your farm is weed pressure, especially if you have our weed of the week. We'll show you how to control it coming up next.